Hello to all our followers and welcome to this new episode of 5 Minutes. Today we will talk about controlling corruption with our guest professor Bo Rostein, August Ross Chair in Political Science at the University of Gothenburg and co-founder of the Government of Quality Institute at the same university. Bo, it is a pleasure to say welcome again since it is your second you. time here at 5 Minutes, so we are very delighted to have you once again with us. But this interview takes inspiration from your new book titled Controlling Corruption, the Social Contract Approach, which will be out these days soon. So my first question is, what do we mean by corruption? The standard definition is something like abuse of power for public gain, but I think it's not a good definition, it's an empty definition because abuse is not defined, so you don't know what norm that is transgressed when you can speak about corruption. So I tried to make the circular move and instead try to define what do we mean by the opposite of corruption? What is the state of affairs we want public officials to uphold? And I landed on the norm of impartiality in the exercise of public power. Why then corruption is so bad? Well, it's bad for many reasons. First, uh, we have all these measures of human well-being, measures of population health, like infant mortality. We also have a number of of measures of um, uh, more soft, like trust and happiness and so on. You can see that when you do the statistics and compare countries, that corruption have a very high detrimental effect on all measures we have on human well-being. Actually, it's much, much stronger than, for example, measures of democracy. But I think the most important thing is that corruption turns out to also destroy social trust and social capital. And that is sort of the, what I think, the cause behind the causes, why we see all those negative effects of of corruption. It destroys the social fabric of society. So, can we control corruption? I mean, we will never see a country without corruption. That would be as likely as a country without crime. It will never happen. But there are uh, strong high levels of variation in the degree of corruption. Even if it's not so easy to measure, it's quite obvious that that both countries differ, but also regions within countries. So uh, we can get corruption under control, which means that corruption becomes more like a deviant thing, not the thing that you usually expect, not sort of the the default uh, situation. Uh, And that is possible, I think. Uh, so, the last question, what is next for governments and institutions to do? Well, the book points out that the standard and much used theory in corruption and anti-corruption research, known as the principal agent theory, in all likelihood represents a very serious misspecification of the problem. Uh, because you cannot think of corruption in those economistic terms. Instead, you should think of corruption more like uh, the establishment of a social contract between citizens and the state. So a social contract is basically citizens pay taxes and they obey the law, and in return, governments actually deliver what they are supposed to deliver in the way they are supposed to deliver this. And this connection is of course what needs more research. What does it take to establish a functioning contract in education, in social protection, in in, uh, public health care, in pensions and so on? And I think this is the important thing to do. Well, thank you so much for for this inspiring discussion and uh, we wish you all the best and we hope to see you here again at five minutes in the future. Thank you. Thanks, a pleasure to be here. Thank you.